Hello there, welcome to lesson number 10 in our series in using Fluid Designer for 3D printing to create pendants. In today's lesson we're going to show you how you can use the skin modifier to create a three-dimensional object or three-dimensional pendant. So if we uh, start off Fluid Designer, um, we need to uh, first of all go to Learning Projects, Jewelry Projects, Pendants and we're doing lesson number 10. So if we scroll down to uh, 10 and drag and drop it onto the workspace, it's a 3D um, skin modifier pendant. Now I'll just switch on the screencast key, so any key presses I make should be displayed here. Um, if you've done lesson number 8, you will have uh, used this um, uh, skin modifier object. Um, and you should already know that uh, if you go to uh, um, 3D template skin modifiers, there are a range of these objects there, all with uh, slightly different size cross sections, 8mm, 10mm, 6mm, etc. And uh, those uh, templates are for you to just drag and drop onto the workspace and just get going, so you don't have to uh, create them yourself. But in essence, all that's happened is that uh, we've added a modifier, so it's a skin modifier to uh, an object. Um, so we're going to start off here and uh, we want to try and create this three-dimensional object. Um, it's not easy to do in just help instructions, so the help instructions for this particular lesson are not great. We would really recommend that you watch the video. So um, let's have a look, let's see what we can do. Um, well first of all let's go to view and top view. So um, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to try and cr create the base of this object. Well first of all I'm not in edit mode at the moment, so I'm going to press the tab key on the keyboard to go into edit mode. So we've got this uh, line here, this base. What we want to do is to come down here and come round now, and we do that with the skin modifier. Once we've got the control point selected at the end here, we press E on the keyboard to extrude it. And at the moment you can see it's, it's moving freely. Well, the reason for that is I haven't switched on the snap. Um, it's a good idea when working with this object, particularly when doing 3D objects, to switch on the snap feature. And the snap's on the toolbar here, so you click on this uh, icon, the magnet, and also select increment. In other words, it will snap to the centimetres on the grid. So that's a, a useful feature to use when uh, working with these skin modifiers. So um, if we press E to extrude now, yeah, it's Oh, it seems to like doing that, I don't know quite why. Press escape again and E to extrude. Oh, it still doesn't want to do it. Um, okay, let me just uh, select the end again. E to extrude, that's better, that's what I'm looking for. Um, surrounded the corner off a bit more than I was expecting, but anyway, let's, let's keep going. Um, so we, uh, we can click there to select uh, that point. And then if we do E to extrude again, we can come across and select that corner and E to extrude again and we can come up and select that corner. Now we are going to round this off in the end so that little bit, those corners will get sorted out when we use a, a, a subsurf modifier at the end. So we've gone round here now. Um, if I just switch view, if I've changed the view to the front view, you'll see that we've got the base of this object and we want to come up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view and view front and if I just open this panel here at the moment the Z location of this current object is zero. So I'm just going to press the tab key and come out of edit mode and with this object highlighted I'm going to change my location and I'm going to move it down 8 millimeters. And I'm then going to use the grid again to draw this middle section. Okay, so the middle part of this. So let me just view it from the front. So we need to go back into edit mode again now. And with the same point still highlighted, I'm going to press E to extrude and I'm going to move it up. And what I'm going to do now is to switch the view to the top view. We're in front view at the moment. I'm going to switch to top view and uh, just move this panel back out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to extrude now. I'm just going to move the point and I'm going to move it into this corner here. So I've extruded it upwards. I extruded it upwards first of all with E, but then I just moved it to this new location. So now I'm going to extrude and go around and create this middle 
section. So E to extrude, move across to the right. E to extrude, move down. E to extrude, move to the left. E to extrude, and move back into that corner. Now I'm going to have to repeat what I just did last time to get to this top point. Because if we go to view and front, <coughs> excuse me, you can see we've got the bottom section. We've got, we've got the middle section here. We now need to go up to this point. So what we can do is we can move the whole object down again. So we moved down 8 millimeters previously. So we're going to move down another 8. So we're going to take that down to minus 16. And I'm going to extrude this now. And extrude up again. And then go to view and top. And this time I'm going to move it to the right and move it down into the center. So I've extruded this line upwards and also now moved it into the center. Okay, so if we uh, go to view in the top now. Um, now we don't need to draw around anymore. What we need to do is to fill in these sections. So I need to go over here and then come down. Yeah, I need to move across and then down and then move across and down. So view it from the top again. So E to extrude, I'm going to extrude it to there. But notice that we're not on the right level. We need to move it down. So if we go to view and front, we can then move it down one layer. Okay, so that's uh, located it in that corner. So view it from the top again. I need to extrude again. But I, again, I'm on the wrong uh, layer. So I need to go to view and front and I need to move it down into that corner. So if we view it from the top, we've now built this line down here. So what we can do now is extrude down to this corner and then build up into the center again. So we can extrude it down. So that's just taken us along the bottom. We now need to extrude up to this point. But if we view from the front again, you can see we're not in the right layer. We're on the, on the bottom layer. We want to move it up to the middle layer. So view from the top again. So we're in this corner now. So we want to move it up into the middle. So it's E to extrude, but again if we view it from the front, we're here now at this middle layer, we need to move it up to the top layer. So we're on the, so if we go view and top, so we're in this middle point on the top and we need to come down to this corner now, so we'll come down in two goes. Um, we could go in one go, but I'm going to stick to doing it in two. So E to extrude to that point, switch to view and front and bring it down. Go back to the top, E to extrude into that corner, view it from the front, and move it down one. So the snap was very important in terms of locating it. Um, and as you can see, we've gone around the shape. We have sort of duplicated this side here a little bit, but that's all right. So we now need to come out of um, edit mode because we've finished creating it now. Um, now, this object has got a modifier, a skin modifier at the moment. So before we can print this, we need to apply this skin modifier. So once we're happy with the shape of this object, we can turn it into a mesh by going to Tools, Object Tools, and converting it to a mesh. Uh, and if I just view it from the uh, front again, what I can do is um, if I just uh, relocate this Z value, if I just take this back to zero again, that will just put it on the grid, just sitting on the grid, the kind of default position. Um, now, this object is the same as the finished one that's here, but I haven't quite completed this one. I haven't applied the subsurf modifier, and the reason for that is when I apply subsurf, it takes up a lot of file space, and I didn't want to do that in the distribution. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this and delete it with X on the keyboard. And then highlight this object, and rather than have it this uh, angular, square sort of shape, um, there are a few bits and pieces that look like errors in it here. Uh, and the corner's not great, I must admit. Um, I am going to try and round this off now. I'm going to do that by going to the modifiers icon, going to add modifier, and using a subsurf modifier. As you can see, the shape changes, and what's happening is we're rounding this off. 
and we do that by changing the view the higher this value the rounder the shape becomes and as you can see that looks a lot nicer now or at least I think it does um, you can stick to the angular shape if you want um, the disadvantage with this is uh, the file size does tend to go through the roof uh, when you start applying this subsurf modifier okay but um, I'm happy with that you can go higher than three but I say the higher you go the smoother it gets but the bigger the file size but again like any modifier we need to apply it so we need to go to tools object tools and convert it to a mesh um, so there's our finished object now so what we need to do is to save it and as usual in fluid designer we go to file and save as and uh, we need to go up through the menu system and look for my projects jewelry projects pendants and we save that as lesson number 10 the 3d skin modifier pendant and we save that as a blender file now we can't print blender files and we also need to check these things in netfab basic because i'm sure there's going to be some problems with this because of the way we've created it um, so we need to go to file and export export it as a wavefront object and i usually do it to the desktop so it's wavefront object uh, to the desktop and um, if I now go to uh, netfab I can open up this file in netfab and um, so go to desktop number lesson number 10 3d skin modifier pendant uh, and as you can see um, there is a warning red triangle here and I was kind of expecting that um, with the nature of this object that we've created here um, so what we need to do is to go to extras and repair the part and Netfab's saying there's some problems down here in this corner which we went over a couple of times in creating it and uh, well, it's not that bad there are six holes and 90 border edge problems I mean that's it's a bit of a problem but I'm sure Netfab will fix it so if we click on um, automatic repair and if we click update you can see all the problems have gone away so we can apply the repair and remove the old part um, now there still is an issue there but um, well let's let, let's try saving it and let's just see what happens um, if we go to part export the part as a wavefront object export it to the desktop as a repaired file um, oh it has saved it um, there may still be an issue here with face orientation but um, if you're uploading your files to um, shapeways or some other company like that uh, if there is an issue there I'm sure it will be sorted out but that file should be okay now that should be a printable file format um, now if we just if I just um, in the last minute just switch over to the internet um, if you go onto the internet and if you google blender skin modifier um, the uh, software behind fluid designer is blender and the people who've created blender are very much into animation and the reason that they use skin modifiers is not to create jewelry but is to create objects like this now i'm not creative enough to create this kind of thing um, but if you're interested in using um, the skin modifier to create these sorts of objects which can be 3d printed as long as the dimensions are right as long as you fit within the um, requirements of uh, whatever it is you want to print in um, so uh, this is uh, what uh, the skin modifier was really created for not for creating pendants it was for creating these sorts of images so if you go to um, Google and you Google blender skin modifier and if you go to YouTube and uh, Google blender skin modifier I'm sure you'll find lots of videos on how to create these sorts of objects and how to really push the boundaries with this skin modifier but that's the end of this lesson, okay? So a simple pendant using the skin modifier. Thank you.